Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Neighborhoods in the Archives. I'm Allison, the archivist at the Northside Neighborhood History Collection at Sulzer Regional Library. Today I'm excited to share some images from the archives that this year's One Book, One Chicago selection, Bedrock Faith, inspired me to choose. Bedrock Faith by Eric Charles May is set in a fictional neighborhood on Chicago's South Side and explores themes of community and connection that are relevant to neighborhoods across the city. Uptown is located on the north side of Chicago, about six miles from the Loop, on the shore of Lake Michigan. Today I'll be sharing just a few images from the NNHC's Robert W. Kruger photograph collection, with a focus on the uptown neighborhood and surrounding area. Robert Kruger was a local photographer who worked with the library to document parts of the north side in the 1980s and 1990s. We'll use his images to explore some well-known landmarks, as well as less famous venues, with a special focus on highlighting the contributions of the diverse groups of immigrants and migrants who have long called Uptown home. For much of the early and mid 20th century, movies and theater brought people together and offered them an escape from their everyday lives. In the years before the Depression, Uptown was one of Chicago's most active and successful entertainment and shopping districts. The Uptown Theater opened in 1925 with seating for over 4,000 people and was just one of many theaters in the area. Another was the Aragon Ballroom, which opened a year later in 1926. An option for shoppers was Goldblatt's department store which was founded by brothers and Polish immigrants, Maurice and Nathan Goldblatt in 1914. Goldblatt's was successful through the Depression and World War II and into the 1970s, and finally closed in 2003. After World War II, Uptown continued to serve as a home for immigrants and migrants. In the 1950s, for instance, a significant number of Native American people came to Chicago due to federal government relocation policies that led Native Americans to move to cities around the country. Many who came to Chicago made their homes in Uptown. The American Indian gift store on Wilson Avenue, pictured here, was founded in the mid-1970s by a proprietor of Navajo Heritage. Another unique uptown institution was the Southern School, shown here in 1986. It was founded during the 1969-1970 school year to serve poor Southern migrants, many from Appalachia, who made their homes in uptown. The founder was also from the South and sympathized with the challenges these students faced in their daily lives. The school soon expanded to serve all children who faced challenging circumstances at home or struggled in traditional public schools. Uptown's diversity also means it is a place where people build their own communities. For a decade, from around 1987 until 1997, Paris Dance was one of the few lesbian bars in Chicago. The owner, Linda Rogers, was active in numerous organizations promoting gay and lesbian rights in Chicago and the bar hosted political events and benefits, in addition to serving as a place for lesbians in Chicago to come together. Creativity and artistry have a long history in the Uptown community. Just one example was Hino and Molly, a high-end fashion company owned by Kazuyoshi Hino and Molly Chompu, immigrants from Japan and Thailand, respectively. They met in Chicago and began their collaboration in 1980. A plant on Ravenswood Avenue produced the pieces they created, which were sold in hundreds of upscale stores around the country before they retired in 2001. Some of the earliest European immigrants to the uptown area were German and Swedish people. Although it is no longer in business, the Swedish bakery at 5348 North Clark was a reminder of this community's presence in the area. When it closed in 2017, it was no longer owned by Swedish immigrants, but it remained a popular and much loved neighborhood institution. 
There are so many more Uptown stories to tell, but I hope this has given you a brief look at just a few of them and some of the many ways Chicagoans find and create community and connection. If you're interested in learning more or if you have your own stories to share, we love welcoming visitors to the Northside Neighborhood History Collection. Right now, you do need an appointment to visit, but we encourage you to reach out to us at northsidehistory at chipublib.org to set up a time to stop by or connect virtually. And we encourage everyone to pick up a copy of Bedrock Faith and read along with us during this season of One Book, One Chicago.